And here we go. We are live. So welcome, everybody, to the eighth episode of Desma Chats. Uh, my name is Andrew Whitcomb, and I am one of the Desma Fellows, a uh, researcher within the Desma Network. And we have started an initiative called Desma Chats, where we bring together experts working in the area of design management uh, to have discussions and kind of share their insights and experiences from working in this area on different topics. And today's episode is all about design management and education. And we're really excited to have a great group of people uh, joining us from all over Europe. And we are actually waiting for one more person. She might pop in here while we're going. Uh, but before we get started, let's do maybe some short introductions. Uh, and just so everybody knows who we are. And we'll try and keep it short because we have a lot of people and just half an hour and a lot of interesting things to talk about. So as I said, my name is Andrew Whitcomb, and I'm a researcher at uh, Veriday, which is a design consultancy in Stockholm, and a PhD student at the University of Gothenburg in Sweden. Uh, so, and then maybe you guys can just introduce yourselves, because you'll probably do a better job of that than, than I will. OK, uh, maybe I can uh, follow as an, uh, the next one, because I'm partly connected to Andrew. I'm a colleague of Andrew. I have been working with the Desma project as a communication strategist over the last two years. And I'm located at the University of Gothenburg, where I am coordinating and leading two courses in a master education called Business and Design, uh, which is in the School of Design and Craft in Gothenburg, which again is in the University of Gothenburg. And that's why I'm here today and try to share my experience of what I've been doing with the business and design education. Great, thank you. And maybe Monica, you want to go next? Since we're going left. Yeah. Um, I'm Monica. I studied design management and graduated in 2014. And then I decided to stay on as assistant, which was great to see the background of how things work and and see behind the scenes. And now I'm at Frog in marketing. Welcome. Hello. Um, I'm the next uh, to introduce yep. myself. So my name is Jan Erik Baars. I'm sitting currently in Lucerne, in the heart of Switzerland, where we run a undergrad program in design management, one of the very few worldwide um, in this field. I have a background in design management uh, for quite some years. Uh, won't say how many, but a lot, and have turned to education recently after more than 20 years in, in business, uh, in design and design management. And what I'm doing the last four years here now is uh, continually uh, develop, further develop the program, and also we're about to expand our program from undergrad to graduate level and, and beyond into uh, postgrad uh, stuff. So really forward to, to learn how others doing this and share what we do. Great. Thank you all very much for taking time out of your busy lives and joining us uh, for this half an hour chat. And our last guest, who we're hoping will be able to join us, is Sabine Junginger, uh, who uh, has a lot of experience in design management education, and hopefully she can introduce herself when she comes. Uh, but if not, uh, if she can't make it this time, our goal is to do a follow-up episode. So stay tuned for information on that if she doesn't cool. come. So, uh, for today's episode, we had kind of three areas within design management education to kind of kickstart the topic. And the first one had to do with planning curriculum and content for design management education. And, um, you know, Jan Eric, maybe since you have tried to build a, a program from scratch, I'd like to start by maybe asking you to provide maybe an overview of kind of what are some content uh, that you know, students in design management should know or that you want to try and, and help them get a grasp of in, in the, your program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it, we actually, I didn't uh, design it from scratch. The program was already very alive and kicking, uh, founded okay. in 2006. When I came in, I, what I brought in was very much the, um, let's say, the view from the work field and uh, understanding what competencies are needed from from that background I basically predominantly looked at the curriculum and how far it developed these competencies within students. And so it's really looking from what is needed to perform the role of a design manager in, in the work field 
uh, and there are many work fields uh, that are accessible or available or atten attainable to uh, design managers. And from that, let's say, role perspective, determine what kind of competencies need to be developed. Functional competencies, so the know-how, skills, methodologies, but also personal competencies. And so being able to relate to others, talk, speech, engage, uh, have empathy, etc. And this was kind of the backdrop uh, for reassessing our curriculum and creating then the various courses that we currently offer. Okay. That's interesting. How does that kind of relate to your experience, Oriana? Um, I think it's interesting to combine these personal competences, but also the like hard skills that you really yeah, should have or need when you get out there in the job market. Um, I think, yeah, that's what, what all the curriculum should really uh, imply, really this yeah, different kind of uh, skill sets. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can add a little thing or a little note there. We are running an undergrad program, so it's really intended to be broad and to provide a good basis to people to then mm -hmm. eventually decide a further education path mm -hmm. or to enter a work field and then really start to get going building a career. It also means that um, if you look at that uh, an undergrad education program, you cannot only focus on developing functional skills or specialized skills, or master yeah. skills, so to say. But you really have yeah. to develop people um, to become um, also role players in a certain sense, mm -hmm. in what, wherever they end up. So mm -hmm. it's crucial. You always have to combine on that level uh, yeah. functional competencies at doing in design management with also a good yeah, self-awareness of your personal competencies that you have. Yeah, I think that really sounds really interesting to me because we in the master education we have so many different students from very different backgrounds. That's that's also one of the values of this master program that it's really diverse. But we see also that the students that have kind of a good self confidence when they start up and kind of know where they are, what they are good at, what they probably are lacking, then they, their learning curve is really steep. But if we have um, students that are a bit, you know, more uncertain and really don't know and that need a lot of guidance, then of course it takes a little bit longer for them to fit in, into the group, to find their identity, because again, we don't want to, we always have to struggle between the business identity and the design identity, uh, but it's not really about like making these divisions, more like finding your own personality in this new field, and therefore it's great if people start off with a good self-confidence, I think. Okay, great. Uh, just, yeah, just uh, pause for a moment to welcome our final guest, Sabine. Uh, welcome. Hi. Hi. We just got started. We're glad that you were able to make it through the technical difficulties. Three browsers later. <laughs> uh, okay. may, may, Maybe before we continue, could you provide a, just a quick uh, overview of where you are and uh, who you are and what you're doing, Sabine? Just right. an introduction. Well, a brief introduction. I'm a design researcher. I have been interested in design management for a while, um, and particularly interested in design in the organization. And um, <laughs> that brings in issues of management, that brings in issues of business. And um, I myself have um, studied um, Design. I have a master in design uh, in communication planning, information design, and I have a PhD in design where I uh, look for my research into how human-centered design uh, works on organizational change in, in organizations. And right now, I'm moving this work together, um, which, which I think is part of what, what we need to do and maybe part of what I want to talk about also in design management. Um, to, to really understand more the, the connections between these different fields and theories of design and um, how we, we uh, what the implications are for design management. So, good enough for now? Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. So, welcome and thank you for being here. And we had just started our conversation about curriculum. And I think two things have come up. Uh, one is kind of developing different skills 
kind of the kind of hard know how know how uh, skills, and then also kind of personal um, kind of you know developing the capacity for empathy and and relating. And so design management education, trying to uh, develop these two things, and also uh, or these two areas. And then also we talked a little bit about the difference in master's education and and undergraduate or bachelor's education, uh, mm -hmm. and how you might need a different approach. You might need a much more kind of broader uh, yeah. focus for undergrads because yeah. they're going to go out and kind of fit in and and grow over time. And yeah. uh, so that's kind of where we at. Is that a decent summary, everybody? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> okay, uh, Monica, do you? Let me know when you want me to chime in, or I'm, I'm happy to listen for the time being. Yeah, it's just a, a casual conversation, so anytime you want to chime in or share some thoughts, uh, feel free. So I'm not sure if Jan Eric has um, already introduced his program, uh, or if you have talked much about that. Have you? Yeah, Sabina just uh, started off explaining that basically the the core, or let's say the the focus of our program was very much coming from looking at the work field requirements because it's an undergrad so we're really trying to develop uh, relevant skills and competencies in people that they can that they can start a professional career filling in mm -hmm. a role that we have identified in many areas in the industry and also mm -hmm. non-industry by the way so it's, it's, it's really performing a certain role in a context and that uh, this role uh, describes uh, basically, or delivers the task that has to be have to be accomplished, and therefore also gives a hint to the competences that you have to develop. And I think this is uh, this is crucial specifically for the school that we're at. We're we're at the uh, University of Applied Sciences, so we very much look into developing um, competencies that can be applied uh, straight on into a business context. Uh, nevertheless, of course, we also uh, have our research activities here at the school where we uh, where we relate with, and also trying to uh, to discover what is beyond uh, what is currently needed, eh? because we also want to deliver skills in people and competencies that uh, are looking a bit further ahead into the future, right. anticipating what uh, businesses will need, and not what they might need now. So I think well, that uh, is also crucial. Maybe one interesting thing I find is that um, your program is one of the few that actually really tends to the topic of design management. I mean, one of the new programs that really tend to design management. We don't have, especially in Europe, a whole you know group of of, pro, uh, of, of programs or or, or um, curriculums and, and and programs that actually look into design management. Uh, you know, challenge it, uh, reflect on it, uh, build on it, and that's quite obvious. When Rachel and I were doing the Handbook of Design Management, just a few years back, right, 2011, we we noticed there is no history of design management. Mm. It doesn't exist. Mm. Right? And and whatever we have right now, for example, is all very um, Western centric. So we assume that design management has its origin with the Industrial Revolution, which there is a good argument to be made. I mean, we can trace it, and, and of all the literature and the research that has been conducted, there is that's the, the broadest kind of or, or, or biggest you know mass of, 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 of writings and, and, and work. But you know, we are just seeing all these places from India to China, uh, Africa, you name it, and what does design management mean there? How did it emerge? How what 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 are the interpretations there? What are the applications? What are the practices? Mm -hmm. And the histories we don't know a whole lot. And and I find this very intriguing. So I'm going to rant off for a few more minutes because right now we have this increasing interest in design thinking in business management organization everywhere, right? Well, mm -hmm. it's easy to say like we're focusing on design thinking and we're then, you know, design management is so 1980s, right? But but if we understand that designing and design thinking are core issues to organizations and that in the organization designing is a core practice, managing is a core practice, organizing and changing are core practices, then somehow you would think and expect that there is some kind of ability to connect these 
and, and not to separate them and just say, you know, we did this design management thing and now we're doing that. But rather we would have to have an interest, what you're doing, Jan Eric, uh, you know, and, and, and invest in this and start to build on this and really create a foundation on which we can go on. And and so there's there's really it's amazing that we that we kind of like hop so lightly I mean like like butterflies from one flower to the next without understanding what the theme between all these are and you know call it design management or design in the organization which is what I prefer um, but it it remains a very important issue and and topic for research and practice in design. Yeah, I can subscribe to that um, coming from <coughs> the, the industry myself, so not having a background in education whatsoever, uh, or briefly on the side, is um, that you discover that design as an activity in an organization is a skill like many others, like what just what Sabina described. It's a, it's a profession, and you can be a trained designer and apply that skill in into an organization. And what you discover is that Predominantly, organizations still are um, or have the shape of a, of a machine. They are industrially designed organisms to perform, and every function has its own, let's say, task to fulfill. And this is the background that I grew up in as a designer myself in, uh, in, within Philips. And you, you start to realize that very quickly, if you want to, to do more than just to function, as an organization, but really if you want to create something or to be relevant to customers and so forth, you need to think beyond the functions and you have to work laterally, huh? horizontally, you have to connect all these different functions. So we had the task to connect design with other functions. Mm -hmm. oh. And it also came up automatically within the organization. Um, all, I mean, it's... Um, to shortcut long, the long story, because I also could not go on forever on this. Um, I met a, a friend recently also suffering in this organization as a designer, and he, he said the same thing. He said, oh, man, everybody's talking about design thinking now. Mm -hmm. And we have not even reached the level that we do the design doing properly. Mm -hmm. um, so essentially, I think it's all about a way of how to incorporate design in an organization on all different levels and design management is one, then there might be other ways also to take care of design in an organization. <laughs> and I think this program that I run here is a fundamental support activity in taking care of design in an organization, and there will be others uh, that maybe in a master program or a postgrad uh, a program that will take care of design in another way and, and also solve the issues that organizations have with design. And vice so, versa. So maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe I should so, um, I mean, very briefly without hopefully cutting anyone else off. But, but it's very interesting, and Eric, how you describe the design because uh, and design management because it it still and this is a valid point to this day uh, builds on this notion of designers entering into the organization and designers finding a spot in the organization and all that. Whereas I often, um, you know, like to say that design already is in the organization long before any designer even thinks of entering into it, because you can also look at the organization itself as a product of design. It doesn't just grow on a tree. People come together, they use materials, resources, they come up with an idea, and they really realize this first product called organization. That funny product of organization has a very interesting uh, 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 requirement. It has to produce and develop services, things, or some kind of offering that makes it appealing to other people. Because if that organization is just in itself self-sufficient, then, oh, I mean, it could be, but, but then at least it offers something for the people within the organization. But, but there must be some sort of something that's being created and developed and, and advanced in order for this organization to remain living. So, so that's, that's kind of a way of also to, to kind of make this connection, a deeper connection between designing and business. And by the way, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something that I'm usually not doing, but I just got the book. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Oh, somehow your connection is breaking down. <laughs> <laughs> It is, 
it is in this context, and I'm, I'm, I'm it's just funny. It, it's, it's a book that, that Jürgen Faust and I um, um, edited together based on these uh, designing business conferences, which we had like four in total when you really count all of them, um, which started with designing social business, designing a sustainable business, and all this, but which really looked to bring together what you're trying to do too, Jan Eric, industry people but also scholars and, and practitioners from very different areas, um, including design, but not exclusively, to really start thinking differently about design, which is the segue into this whole design thinking connects a lot of stuff. It's about thinking about design or thinking through design from, from these ways, rather than just using design thinking as a method, but rather we're, we're looking at you know what does what does it mean when an organization thinks design? Mm -hmm. That's very different than when when an organization says, "Oh yeah, we're doing design thinking. We're you know doing five steps, and at the end, in five minutes, we have another great idea." Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's that. There's a purpose for the letter. There's a purpose, and and there are moments where that's really good, and and some of the skill we want to harness. But if it's the only offering we have from design to the organization, it's not much different than we're presenting ourselves as the uh, people capable of developing the next iPod. Mm -hmm. That's not making an organization. It's a one-time offering. Yeah? But what we want the organizations to do is to really understand how human interactions, human experiences run through the whole organizational construct and how it affects organizations, how it can help them understand different ways of going about their own design activities and their own product development, whatever that is, right? And, and to be honest, and you, you probably agree, Jan Eric, you know, not everyone needs the Apple kind of treatment. For some, it's perfectly fine to have a little bit of engineering design. Perfectly fine, right? Um, but the challenge is always, are they aware that that's what they're doing? And are they consciously choosing this option, or is it just a default? Mm -hmm. it's, it's really when I when I when I bring up design management and design thinking, it's always it's always the question: Are you defaulting because you either haven't thought about it, or you don't know anything else, or you don't know where to look otherwise, or is it a conscious choice? And so I think what we're doing in design management in ed education is also helping designers and everyone else who's interested in the, in the issue to, to start articulating what the possibilities are so that then the possibilities can be laid out and then we can make choices and we can experiment and we can find that something's not working but we can, we can do something. And that, that's for me I think of an educational approach um, that would be my, my vision and my hope that, that we're getting to that kind of you know, foundational level. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I totally actually, agree with you. That's also what we are probably trying to do to give the students also this fundamental meaning, the skills, this mindset of, of what it means that they're bringing design into other contexts, organizations, institutions, and then um, having, for example, design thinking just as one of the methods, one of the different processes, but not, not as the thing that. The, you apply and then everybody ch everything changes and everything is going to be good. But it's really about developing and experiencing and experimenting with these basic skills that the designer uh, needs to have entering these new realms. The, uh, the way that we've responded in our program is that in the competency framework that we've generated, um, we try to reflect on these things. So, because in the end, we want to develop competencies in the training program. That's, that's sole purpose. And one thing that we've discovered in analyzing these issues that also Sabina brought up is that the collaboration is the is the, one of the biggest um, yeah. hurdles that organizations mm -hmm. face today, specifically when they start to occupy themselves with design. So the way how how people relate to others in and also create collaborative environments is very crucial and we do that a lot in our program. And so we basically develop not only self-understanding, as I already said, but also understanding the others. And therefore, we 
we run our projects predominantly in teams. And Monica can uh, <laughs> describe maybe what that means. <laughs> and also in that, we develop the skills of, you know, how do I relate to the others and how can I create and foster collaboration? What does it mean to, to achieve something together rather than having an isolated view on my personal uh, yeah, participation into a project? So in the end, the design management skill or competency, skill set competency uh, that we build is very much one of a mediator between specialists, a collaborator, a person that can bring people together, that work toward a common goal, and also relate and convince people of different opinions, uh, that bring them together and that they share in a, in a mutual, uh, mutual goal. Because if you bring design and management together in an organization on whatever level, as Sabine described, you can also run a, uh, a small business, not an Apple-like business, but still you have to solve these problems all the time. And I think that uh, you can see design management a bit as a, yeah, as the in-between, as the, the lubricant between um, different functions. Mm -hmm. That's it. <coughs> it's, uh, I mean, just the... the topic of design management and kind of the competencies you're developing as a design management uh, or a design manager uh, are quite interesting. But one thing, I mean, we're running a little bit out of time, but hopefully we can, as usual. We can touch on this, of course. It's a big topic to fit in the half an hour with, with so many awesome people. Uh, but one thing that I was hoping to get to today is the other side of the coin, uh, which is kind of institutions and arrangements of programs. And uh, one of the big hurdles, I mean, we've talked about the relatively few number of design management programs that exist. And it seems like one of the issues that comes up a lot is, well, universities and uh, different education systems are just not set up to, to handle that, or they're making it very difficult to kind of work in a collaborative way, bring people from different backgrounds together, and things like that. So one thing I'm wondering is uh, if we have any examples of, you know, how have people been able to bridge those, those uh, hurdles, so to speak? <laughs> yeah. I mean, funny, isn't it? Education is replicating the industry way of working. Uh, so when industries chuck themselves up in functions, so we do the same in education. Mm -hmm. So we had to gather our lecturers from five different departments. So we actually, it was a design management job to create a design management program. We had to collaborate with all the different departments that have different ways of thinking, different ways of working. Mm -hmm. And it shows how yeah, how also influential this dominant, uh, diversified thinking is also on education. Mm -hmm. So actually, we are now part of the design faculty, luckily. Uh, we could also have been part of the economics faculty or business faculty. We are not. But we are using lecturers from all of our five departments. Mm -hmm. So business, okay. uh, design, uh, techno technolo technology, social sciences, so it's, uh, it's, yeah, we, as we said, in business we are the gel uh, between the functions, so are we in education, and it has a bit of an impact on how we scape, uh, shape our program. Yeah, I mean, I have, I have the first experience with the bottom two. I'm going to talk to one at Lancaster where we, where we did set up a master program in, um, in design, and focus on management. So we, so it's, the connection is is bad on her side, unfortunately, yeah. isn't it? Um, ah, there she's back. Can you hear me? Oh, there we go. That's better. Yeah? Oh, my God. Uh -huh. I, sorry. Um, Anyway, so I was just saying, well, Lancaster University, we were able to set up this master in design uh, with a focus on management and policy, which um, was, was really a design in the organization degree. And um, that worked out quite well as long as we were in our own department. The moment we were trying to cross the department, we run into different payment structures and, you know, paying students by head and teacher times and we realized we had even different kind of module structures and sessions, and so that was very complicated. Um, nonetheless, I think overall that, that program has succeeded. 
Another example right now is from Austria, where where a business, a private university, has been setting up uh, a, a program, and it ran into complete um, resistance from the established university system, which wanted to see the traditional business training um, reflected in something that is, you know, more entrepreneur and innovation centered. And uh, as a matter of fact, it was critiqued that, that it was mostly entrepreneur and innovation theories that would come to the fore in this program and not the traditional production sciences. It was uh, really, uh, you know, and, and, and how do you go against that? Because now you have uh, an accreditation system that looks to uh, affirm its own standing and is driven by its own uh, ethos. And, and standards, and um, and they have the means to to uh, make judgments on something that they essentially don't understand, <laughs> so, and and it's complicated. So sure. so we'll see. I mean, it's it um, and 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 it really in Germany or in 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 Europe, you you can see that that part of the problem with design management is that yeah. and Jan Eric, you can help me out with this. But, but I sense that there is still a struggle with what is design and isn't that the Bauhaus and the Ulm school and shouldn't we continue that? And then what is management? Which in Europe, you know, if you look for an MBA in Europe, it's not what it is in the US. It's a production science degree mostly, right? So, so now you're trying to develop that and and it's it's very um, it, we'll see if, if we succeed on that end. Um, curious, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I actually think that we have to maybe see some change in this in the future, hopefully, because for us it's also we are between the business school and the design school, and we have different structures and also different payments and all the same problems. But also, I think it sometimes comes down to how do we grade our students as well? What's this master title about? Because we have. Master of Fine Arts and Master of uh, Science students, but who is having what and on what basis are we grading? Do we need to have a new title for design managers? I don't know. I think there is a lot to do. <laughs> yep. Well, that brings us to 30 minutes, which is unbelievably short, and we've basically just scratched the surface of this uh, topic. So hopefully we can get some of you back to join us for a second uh, chat or continue this conversation in some other forum. Uh, there's been talk of sharing resources, and I think that this conversation is in uh, kind of under the radar in lots of different areas around the world. So hopefully this is uh, just one step in the right direction. I think it'll just take a lot of these little maneuvers, and then hopefully we can make some of that big change that uh, sure. we need to make these programs come to life. But uh, I want to thank you all again for joining us. And it's been a pleasure chatting with you. And remind anybody out there that if you are interested in participating in Desma Chats, you can find us at chats.desmanetwork.eu. And of course, the Desma Network just released our, our book uh, for our project, so you can find that on desmanetwork.eu as well. And uh, we hope to continue the conversation and uh, keep working together to uh, spread the word about design management. So thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank You're you. Welcome. Great job. Thank you. Bye. -bye.